All right, here we go. Final bit. So what we're going to do is, like I said, you actually find a lot of these out of order. So we're going to play them in the order that they're meant to be listened to. Sort of. There's, you know, like, mainly like the Forerunner one. We're going to listen to all the Forerunner entries in order. But yeah, or along with stuff like, you know, listen to the adventures of Kit Pitlin in the order. Or, you know, for like, listen to his whole saga at once. Um, and then listen to the other little bits throughout the the levels. So here's all the different intel. Uh, it really helps flesh out the levels uh, or just flesh out the universe. It's really interesting overall. I love it. Hope you enjoyed this series. Uh, I hope you enjoy listening to this. And until next time, this has been Halo Cannon.
was gone. We started cutting through the glass today, making a road to a site they've picked out to set up a shanty town they call Meridian Station. I'm starting to wonder if I can do this. Most of the folks here are signed up for the profit. I'm the only one who's here trying to take something back. But there's just so much. I look out on that sea of glass and I, I wonder if it can really ever be done. Today I found myself working alongside another former colonist, tough old broad named Lottie. I told her about what I'd been feeling. She laughed in my face. She told me, sister, you got to forget about what Meridian was and think about what it could be. I like that. So now when I chip away the glass, I picture a new world we're making. Got a new shipment in from Bozo. A warthog, three monkeys, and five pelicans. Checked them, and they're all completely clear of identifiable markings. Bozo, contrary to his nickname, knows his business. I've been putting together a retrospective on Meridian in these, her final days. Records indicate that 139 ships carrying 70,003 souls arrived on this green ball in 2432. Since many of those settlers came from France, they named the first town Avignon and established the colony of Meridian. Early on, there was a big debate over the future of Meridian. Some wanted it to stay unspoiled and undeveloped. Others wanted to build it out. The debates between these stewards and prospectors came to an end when rich mineral deposits were found in the Mathan mountain range, causing a rush of new development as everyone tried to claim their peace. Free Frontier Education presents The History of Meridian, Part 3. Despite the early success of the Prospector Party, the stewards gained control of Meridian after a lengthy campaign known as the Free Patriot Movement. The Colonial Administration Authority eventually recognized the stewards, ending years of strife. Free Frontier Education presents The History of Meridian, Part 7. Military production served as the colony's primary source of revenue, and the contract for the Scorpion MBT ensured Meridian's bright future. After five years of near-constant fighting, insurrectionists lost control of Meridian to UNSC forces at the Siege of Athia. Rank-and-file members of the Sundered Legion were offered amnesty by UNSC officials, although their leaders would go on to stand trial in UEG courts. Almost immediately after Meridian was recaptured by the UEG, the Covenant arrived. Captain Edmund Percy of the UNSC Sevenfold Gates fought to the last, but was forced to order what few ships remained to fall back to the edge of Hestia's system. Within five hours of Captain Percy's retreat, Meridian was glassed, and all life there was eradicated. I found a body in the glass today. Shook me up. <clears throat> Doc Kale said I should talk about it, so here. I'm talking about it. Think I'm done now. Meridian didn't get it too bad. They hit the human settlement hard, sure, and the plasma bombardment boiled some of the oceans off, but there was enough atmosphere to hold some steam in. Covey's did a rush job, and the planet survived. Less than a third is left out of Lyra. So we chip away at the worst parts like cutting a rod off an apple. Quick job. Should be done inside of 20 years. The plasma they used to glass planets burns so hot, most stuff just vaporizes. But sometimes there's a flicker in the beam and the temp drops just enough. That's how you get stuff that's still intact. And yeah, sometimes you get bodies. It's ugly, but I didn't get hung up about it. What gets me, though, is the dogs. Just excavated a homestead and there was a leash leading under the porch. So I'm taking a day off. Clear deep the other day. Cut through what used to be a forest. Dug through the glass and cracked right into a natural cave formation. Found actual plant life and pools of standing water with little white bugs hopping around in them. After working sterile glass for so long, seeing those bugs done me a world of good. Running a top-level D-glass south of the populated area, and we hit some kind of metal we couldn't cut through. Ran a pulse, and we got echoes of a subterranean structure or something. I don't know, I'm not on the anthro team. The thing is, there's loose soil beneath it, so whatever that metal is, it shrugged off a direct plasma bombardment. Damnedest thing. The high winds the plasma kicks up? Scatters things for miles. Stuff can get thrown into the molten soil, and if it doesn't burn up, it... 
It sticks like a fly in amber. Or things get caught in bubbles of ash, like inside a snow globe. And sometimes things just happen, like finding one single house untouched in a glass field. Figure that's just to help us remember. Make us remember. Up on a station, everything's white and gray and bland. Some folk are afraid of any place the corners aren't round. Wouldn't dream of living down here, where the ground is ash and glass. Good riddance. A few years' time, kids who come up on Meridian are gonna run this system. Bet your life. I'll get the guys who spend all day worrying about Governor Sloan. And you can't deny, he does a hell of a job. I'm sure he does that thing where he talks with two voices sometimes, but most folk do the same thing. Just aren't courteous enough to do it out loud. It doesn't bother me. I, mean, I know he's got Meridian's best interests at heart. Governor, just got a message from Thivianathan. Losing his mind. Says he found something in the rock near Meridian Station. The unknown material and too damn big to be man-made anyway. I need to check his readings, but I wanted to give you a heads up. Governor Thivy Anison talked me into letting him take a crew to see what was under the rock. They found, well, it looks like metal. Not slag. Nothing I know. I'll send you some sample readings shortly. Hey, Thivy Anathan, Sloan saying to force it open. He can't wait to see what's behind that door. He figures Liang Dortmund might pay us a bonus if we find something good. Here's hoping for a finder's fee, yeah? Equipping a team to rehabilitate a glass planet means accounting for its extreme conditions. Uniforms have to deal with extreme cold surface temps, as well as the heat generated by drills. Liang Dortmund set us up with some UNSC-developed tech, gel layer they call it. Goes on under your clothes and keeps temperatures steady. This stuff is magic. And I should have listened to my brother when he said taking this job was a bad idea. The air is full of tiny glass particles. Rips your lungs to shreds, you breathe enough of it. Between the masks and the air filters on every building, I haven't had a breath of unfiltered air in three years. Near the same as living on a space station. Matilda, I just thought you should know we're being evacuated. Now, don't panic. I'm sure it's nothing. Sloan just wants us to get clear of some potential trouble, and we'll be safer off-world. I'll call again when I'm clear. Matilda... I just watched the last mule take off. There's no more ships left. Sloan's telling us to move to the space elevator. So they're moving us to Warthogs. There's a lot of fighting going on out there, though. It doesn't seem safe. Matilda, I made it to the elevator, but now I'm stuck at the base. There's a huge line. I guess it wasn't made to carry so many people at once. I'm sure it'll be my turn soon, Matilda. Uh, I'll send you another message when I'm in orbit. The so-called glass is a mineral called Le Chatelorite. It is the result of the Covenant lances striking the surface of the planet with plasma, converting the topsoil to glass. Any attempt to make a glass planet habitable would mean cutting the surface down to below this topsoil. And then, there was a bright flash. Guardian pulled us to paradise. The prophets were not liars. The great journey is for true. I was wrong! The demon has come! This is our punishment! The look in my head and saw that I doubted! Oh, I never should have doubted! Separated from the rest of my squad. We were pulled in from patrol around Obon and landed... wherever this is. Bunch of cubbies already here, too. That's no good. Words are most powerful before blades are drawn. The sun warms those who stand before those who kneel in their shadows. Strength comes from recognizing another's weakness. When night falls, even the greatest colo herder will still smell like a colo. Do not ignore the words of those who saw the sun before you. No blade is sharp enough to cut an unknown enemy. Is dead. We should regroup on Hesduros, but my brothers would rather die in reckless attacks on the swords of Sanghelios than suffer the dishonor of a tactical retreat. 
betray allegiance to the Arbiter, but are traitors working with the Covenant? Why do you skulk in the shadows? Come draw your blades! You live without honor! Must you die the same way? I will kill you all myself! Soon ah! Endaba is dead. The Covenant fractures. Soon the Kikyar's contracts will expire. The swords of St. Helios will stand triumphant. Scout McKay's third patrol! We walked into an ambush! I repeat, a Covenant ambush! Send reinforcements! Jewel and Dama has been killed. We will answer this dishonor by placing the Arbiter's head on a pike. The Swords of San Helios is nothing but a stain on our homeworld history. Another day of endless meetings. Our talents are wasted here. Kituna Rock, my brother. Though we fought as we were growing up, only now are we truly enemies. I hope you will see through the lies of Julem Dama. The swords of St. Helios would welcome a warrior as strong as you. Katuna Rock, my brother. I remember our first hunt together. When we brought our prey home, it was a moment of greatness, of hope. The Covenant brings only shame to the Sanghili, but it will soon fall. I wish to hunt with you at my side again, brother. It is not too late. Jakularak, my brother. We were raised to respect our ancestors. What would they think about your allegiance to humans? What would they think about you following the False Arbiter, who brought shame on us all? Come home to the Covenant, brother. We will not lose. Jakul Rock, my brother. Your tales of our hunts fill me with sadness for times gone. If your desire is to meet again, let it be as brothers united for the Covenant. Jakul Rock, my brother. Now that we are free of the corruption of the Sanshum and the foolishness of Jul and Dama, you have no reason to refuse my offer of amnesty. Come home, brother. My brother, it seems our ancestors wished us to confront our stubbornness. Today, I killed you for your betrayals. Yet you were strong. You ensured that by dawn, I will join you. Perhaps, beyond the battles of this world, we will find a way to live together in peace once more. Jewel and Dama has been killed. We will answer this dishonor by placing the Arbiter's head on a pike. The Swords of San Helios is nothing but a stain on our homeworld history. Another day of endless meetings. Our talents are wasted here. We camp below the Titans of old. The stone warriors meant to guard Sinion against us, I suppose. Or are we retaking Sinion from the Occupying Covenant with the Titans at our backs? And when the Great Guardian awakes, will it save us or forsake us? My head swims. I long for problems that can be solved with a plasma grenade. To spill blood outside of battle is a great dishonor. Words burned into all St. Healy since they were young. Into me. And for a time, I believed. I watched my brothers die around me and never dared give aid. Stitching a wound close brings dishonor. Setting a broken bone brings dishonor. Words of the ignorant ancient who never saw undetonated needle rounds pulsing beneath a brother's skin. If shame is the price of compassion, so be it. Anthropological Linguistics Log, Kolat Kabram speaking. Our history is lost in a haze of lies and myth. As the covenant ends, I wish to relearn what we have lost. But the eroded and half-ruined glyphs in this place are maddening. Fragments of words dance before me. Here, prophecy. And here, reunite. Or restore. Then a warning. Something about responsibility. And a great drowning. I could 
Thank you. 
will s still be working for the city of Healy, but at least it will be on the winning side. Arbiters often seen pacing the exposed cliffside of the rebel camp. He would be vulnerable to long-range attack, but it would destroy enemy morale if we could catch him and crush him with one of the Kraken's claws. Check the feasibility of that maneuver. As I threw my banshee toward the Kraken, I could see the four humans running along the ridge below me. They were fighting uphill and greatly outnumbered. The Covenant forces barely slowed them down. Jewel and Dama used to say humans could never stand against the glory of the Covenant. It shames me to think I once took orders from such a fool. Security officers log. I was able to convince a Covenant grunt to tell me how they tracked the Arbiter's movements. Marak Vadam of the Arbiter's Keep. The Covenant promised him power and prestige, a desperate ploy from a dying faction. Marak did not resist when he was questioned. Perhaps he thought the Arbiter would not execute a member of his own clan. <laughs> he was wrong. Human Science Report, Log 42. Prolonged observation of the Dr. Halsey supports theories from New Alexandria that human females signal maturity by losing appendages. Hmm. If my hypothesis be correct, soon the Dr. Halsey will release her spores and spin a cocoon of rich meat silk. Hmm. Truly, this is a very exciting time to be making science. <laughs> Speak not to the Holy Guardian of Sinaion. Pray only that it remains still. Let it not stir, else it tear our world asunder. Oh, Guardian. May this prayer keep him asleep forever. He keeps our world safe and protects the Covenant. The domain cannot be opened as long as he stays sleeping. Oh, Guardian, magnificent sleeper. We have fallen back again and again, and now they are here. Here. The heretic filth has pushed into Sunion. What madness is this that our strength can be overcome by their weakness? I am Kit Pitlin, the Explorer. The Covenant's future depends on ancient Forerunner secrets. That's what Jewel and Dama said, so I will look for them. I know there are some old places around here. I will investigate at night so no Arbiter forces can see me. Kit Pitlin here. I know we are not allowed in the old place, but I sneaked in, and I saw the old signs, just like the ones at Sunion. The signs for the Guardian. Kit Pitlin here. I understand it now. The Guardian is connected to places all around. Others are afraid of him. They think that he will destroy us. I think he's our real vessel to the Great Journey. When the time comes, I'll be ready. I knew it! Kit Pitlin has always been bound for destiny! I speak as one who has undergone the great journey! Now, I will talk to the gods! I will be a god! I will... What is that creature? If you are a god, I worship you! Otherwise, worship me! Wait, no! No! So I've been thinking, if this place is supposed to be all perfect and made for us, how come nothing looks right? Where's the salty box, huh? Where's the methane springs? I mean, we can't even breathe over here. Not even the elites like it. I mean, who was this paradise made for, huh? I got no clue. Marine Selena Ronan here. Our last known location was circling the Guardian at Samaron. There was a sequence of shockwaves and then, then we were here wherever here is, our pelican slips spaced in and came under immediate fire. <sighs> Not many survivors. We'll try to find shelter and gather some supplies from the wreckage. <sighs> this is a nightmare. Over. Marie Gulas reporting in. So far, all we know about this planet is that it has hostiles. We've spotted Covenant. They probably got pulled along accidentally, same as us. We're holed up and maintaining a defensive perimeter. 
but the Calvies get aggressive when they're confused, and we're low on ammo. I don't know how long we can hold on. Marine AJ Kaz reporting again. Just had to change location. Those robot things came after us hard. We went through the hills and could see Covenant ships getting slip-spaced in and crashing all over the place. For now, we're bunkered by some structure. Started moving a little while ago. Don't know why. Don't know if we'd be safer nearby or if we should get away from it. Don't know much. Over. The Guardians sounded their mighty call and tore the stars apart. They brought us here. The ships of believers and heretics alike were flung to the fertile ground where the survivors engaged in a glorious slaughter. Yes, to die here, in the home of the gods, is the highest honor. I cannot wait. His name was Big Jam. He was a mere grunt, scarred though spirited past his useful years. His advice was unconventional. Fight as if there was no honor in death. He guided us to victory in conflict after conflict, and while we reveled in our glory, he mourned every brother we lost along the way. As the war went on, Bib Jam became more concerned with protecting us. When we finally caught him betraying our movements to the swords of St. Helios, he told us capture was the only way for us to avoid death. He truly believed he found a way to save us. I could not meet his gaze when I ran him through. The hand of the Didact was broken. Why have none risen to take his place? The abiding truth will not persist if none are left alive to speak it. If I am branded a heretic for doubting the Forerunner's promise, then so be it. This is Pilot 28-5 Lee from Dropship Boatsa, coming down on an unknown planet. Mayday, mayday. Sending our location now. We've been caught in a slipspace bubble of... an... unknown entity. I managed to get out of the crash site with the Mantis, but I'm injured. I had to find a safe place. Catching my breath. I've seen more UNSC dropships coming with those slip space bubbles. No survivors found yet. I need to rest. I have no idea what's going on here. There is no future for the Covenant. The gods turned their backs after the human woman offered the librarian's key, and Endama took it. That was meant to test his faith, his ability to resist temptation. He failed. We all failed. This is our punishment. With Bastion beyond my grasp, I turn to the possibility of the domain. However, there is corruption. The source untraceable. Investigations, but no returns. Time runs short. Acquisition of endurance proved difficult in these final days. An Ancilla has agreed to aid my efforts, yet there is concern if he will carry through. However, if Bastion has indeed achieved the impossible, I must find a way of reaching them. If that path be through death and domain, so be it. Bastion is absent, not destroyed, simply missing. No other facility is near enough. A new course of action is required. Bastion's location is confirmed. How, though? After dispersal of the halos, an impossible act of reconciliation would be required. It may still be possible. It is time. I go now. To Bastion. Where... where am I? Is this... domain? Designation Genesis. How? Where is Bastion? Communications few. Constructor network picking up echoes. Confusing. Organon gone. Domain burned.
important, damaged, so many lost, missing. The warden made a pact. With whom? How does he walk once more? Ancilla knew how. She reassembles. She cures herself. Soon, domain. The Guardians. She sees them. She understands. Stop her! The Ancilla. She knows I'm here. She hunts me. Construct a network under warden control. Control can be taken back. External, though. The monitor could help if only I could speak to her. Bastion. Bastion. Ancilla distracted. Warden as well. Domain repairing. Healing. I feel clear for the first time in... There. Finally, I see. After so long, Bastion, Bastion still lives.